they have feckless leadership nowadays in Mara, in the owner. And it also gives me no pleasure to say I'm a fan of the family and what they've done for the Giants uh, and, and, the, and the organization and the way they normally go about their business. But this is really bad. Jerry Reese, you know, you had a GM in place for years and years and years who spent two first and two seconds on your offensive line and you have the worst offensive line in football, right? Who spent a first round pick on Eli Apple and you just traded him for a fourth rounder. Now, I understand it's Gettleman and not Jerry Reese who's doing the trading now. You got a fourth rounder for Eli Apple. I suppose that's good. But to go from a first rounder and turn him into a fourth rounder a couple years later, that's not so good. Now, you can say it's an indictment on the previous regime, except Mara put this regime in place now and they thought they were going to go for it. If it turns out that because of the way Gettleman did things and the way Schumer, Shermer sorry, did things, they, that the Giants wind up with this incredible running back and also get a, the, the top quarterback in this upcoming draft and it turns out to be great, then it's like a Mr. Magoo thing. Oh, Magoo, you've done it again, right? Like you wind up in a good position, but you did it accidentally. This shows a, a, a fundamental misunderstanding of what you had as a team, both by the outgoing GM and the incoming GM, and, by the way, the coaching hasn't been good in either regime. Let's just be honest. I had high hopes for Shermer. I was defending him. Enough bad play calling over enough games starts to make you say, okay, this guy isn't the guy. And this is – now we're talking about the second regime well, in as many years. The only thing I want to add to is this. It's the same old, same old from this perspective. I think that – where you see the Los Angeles Rams with McVay, where you see the Chargers with an Anthony Lynn, where you see guys like that, you see a new era, a new breed. Where you look at the New York Giants, you see an organization that appears to be is if just as much, if not more so, interested in maintaining a culture than positioning themselves to actually win football games. And well, I think that's what you're seeing here with the New York Giants because, again, Gettleman was in Carolina. I know he did a decent job in Carolina, make no mistake about it. But, again, you had some issues there when you let go of Josh Norman for nothing. For nothing. I mean, you don't lose a Josh Norman for nothing. But that's what happened with the Carolina Panthers. And then you got Pat Shermer. Again, somebody tell me. Again, I'm not going to sit up here like, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm qualified to – engage in the nuances of what is required to be a head coach and act like Pat Sherman doesn't know the game of football. But when you look at him, do you see a leader of men? Do you see somebody that wants you want to lead your franchise? Yeah, I don't have future? a problem with him along That's those lines. Issue. I don't well, have a problem. Really one, thing, one thing you're right about, Stephen A., is they're not positioned to win football games. It doesn't even look like they're interested in winning football games this season because I've got this, Max, to make you even happier. The Giants have shipped out, and this happened just before our show. You've heard it by now, I'm sure. But defensive star Damon Snacks Harrison sending him to the Detroit Lions for a fifth-round pick, according to our Adam Schefter. All right, Max. Yeah. Thoughts on the Harrison trade? I love Snacks. He's a very popular player, uh, you know, among Giants fans because he's a very good player. But he's a run stopper who's not working in Betcher's defense, which is more attack, attack, attack. And um, he makes a lot of money, and he's 30 years old, and he's signed up for a couple more years after this. So it's the kind of trade that's made by a team where you go, okay, they got something for him, most fans. My own point of view about a player like this is whoever gets him in that deal got the better of a deal. If you think you're ready to win and you can pick up snacks, you need help in the run game, you know, you know uh, stuffing the run, and you pick up snacks for a fifth-round pick, you did really well. And what bothers me about it is I didn't like the Khalil Mack trade for Oakland. But, because a, a great defensive player in his prime, why are you trading that? But at least it was part of an intentional plan. Gruden looked around and said, I'm tearing this down. I'm going to take my best player by far. I'm going to get draft picks for him. The Giants didn't do that. They looked and said, um, I'm going to draft the running back. Let's draft the running back because we're ready to win. Our best player, let's extend him long term instead of moving him. And now after it doesn't work, you're starting to take well, kind of good players and not get much for here's them. The, here's the reason why I'm opposed to anybody who has the notion that they should have moved Odell Beckham Jr. The same thing that caused trepidation on the part of the New York Giants before they gave him the long-term deal is the same thing that folks would have used as an excuse to devalue him in terms of the asset they gave and got assets they gave away in return for him. So if you was Khalil Mack, we never heard anything about him. 
We never heard anything from him. We knew that he was a big-time defensive player. Okay, fine. I'm just sitting back waiting for my money. And that's all we knew. So as a result, you could end up getting a couple of first-round picks for him. Unfortunately, in today's NFL, if, if the wrong headlines are created about you, it can be used as an excuse to devalue you and thereby for not forcing you or compelling you to have to give up with so many assets in order to acquire those guys. Well, That's why I say you hold on to them. I wouldn't have traded Odell. I wouldn't have traded Cleo yeah, Mack. But at least up. one team had a plan. I, I, I understand the rules of first take. I've been here before. I'm no rookie. But when I, I want to share this with the audience. This is first take. What is this calm analysis you have of the Snacks Harrison trade? When we talked this morning and you heard this, this is what I heard from Max Kellerman. What? What? They traded Snacks Harrison? And then when it was announced it was for a fifth, it was nothing but laughter from you. This was not something you liked from the start. No, I, of course I don't like it because as, but I understand why they did it. Like f a sober football analysis says you got something for a 30-year-old on a big contract who can't rush the passer as well as you'd like. But, my, but from the point of view of someone who's been watching football since I was seven or eight years old and I'm now 45 years old, I can tell you the team that gets the better of this kind of deal is Detroit. The team that gets the player where you go, we picked him up for a fifth. What were we going to get with a fifth-round pick? This guy's excellent right now. He's excellent right now. That's the team that gets the better of it. So when I'm laughing, I'm laughing at the kind of state of the Giants. Right. It, it's not about even the specific trade. It's like, okay, Snacks is gone for a fifth rounder. Right, of well, course. Well, what, what, what Will is saying is that it ain't funny. What the hell is so funny about the New York Giants? I think you have to, at a certain point, la there's a... There's laugh a, at the pain? Yes, there's an old Yiddish <laughs> expression about this. Well, Men then you're a little bit late to that there, part. You should have been laughing. There's an old Yiddish expression about this. Right. Men tracht und Gott lacht. Men, man makes plans or thinks and God laughs. And so Got I'm it. being laughed at right now by the football guys.